Here, here's here's my um, my take on the debate. I have been praying um, the last two debates that the American people will just see who each side is, whoever they are. Lord, just let them be revealed for who they truly are. I think Barack Obama was reve- it was revealed on who he truly is. An angry, disinterested, not really understanding even what America is all about kind of guy. And Romney was revealed for who he is. A kind, gentle, decent man who gets it. That's what happened. That's, that's, that's the debate, the presidential debate in a nutshell. Here's what was revealed, I think, last night. Paul Ryan is a good, decent, honest guy who's a young politician who um, I think has a handle on things, but he is young. Joe Biden, an out-of-control, nasty dude. I, 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 think, mm-hmm. I think this is divine providence. Look up um anybody have anybody anybody have any scriptures? Look up uh Proverbs twenty nine, the twenty nine nine or twenty nine six. Um I, I I just tweeted this this morning. God's tweet is already out. God's tweet, I mean he, he tweeted this in Proverbs years ago. <laughs> is that what the scriptures are? There's the yeah, they're, they're the God collection tweets. of tweets. They're God tweets. Uh, uh yeah. six is Twenty nine nine is what you tweeted. Uh, did you? Oh, twenty nine nine. nine. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's if a wise man contends with a foolish man, whether the fool rages or laughs, there is no peace. <laughs> yeah, here you're reading a different. Uh, what are you reading? Is that uh, King James? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, is it the one that uh, you... Dan sent last night? I think. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. Yeah, I can find that. It's probably New American. Uh, uh, yeah, standard. here we go. Uh, when a wise person debates with a fool. The fool rages and laughs, and there is no peace and quiet. Isn't that great? <laughs> Isn't that great? That's, I think that's what happened. I think that's what happened. A wise man debated with a fool, and the fool laughed and raged, and there is no peace and quiet. I mean, I didn't get anything out of this debate last night, and I think, it was, I think it was a tie. I think Biden, if he wouldn't have been such a jerk, Biden would have won. Yeah, I think he beat himself. I, I he think did. He, I think he lost last night, but I think he he beat himself. And again, may I go back to divine providence? We have a long string of uh, of evidence that these people are not enemies of ours; they're enemies of his, and they will destroy themselves. Just stand back, be who you're supposed to be. Stand back. Do what you're supposed to do. Don't worry about trying to take them out. They will take themselves out. And we can show it to you over and over and over again. People just destroy themselves. I think he destroyed himself. Paul Ryan wasn't that good last night. He wasn't bad, but he was a young, um, inexperienced with a national debate like that where Mm -hmm. Joe Biden has done, what, 400,000 of them? I think he was right. there with Lincoln. It he, was Lincoln, Douglas, and Biden, wasn't it? Yeah, mm-hmm. there was one of them with mm-hmm. Biden involved. Right. I, th- I didn't think Ryan, though, was seemed inexperienced on the facts or anything like no, that. No, no, no. It was just the it fact was... of, like, how do you deal with a buffoon like Biden on a national stage? Correct. That's difficult. But and yeah, he it didn't is. nail that. He didn't nail that. And Biden did everything he can to throw him off. Mm-hmm. That's all he was trying to do was throw him off. He did try to bait him the entire time to get angry. And Ryan did not do that. And I was there. I thought Ryan showed extreme restraint. There was a couple of times like this, this, this line about, um, okay, so you're going to, it's never worked to cut taxes. It's worked several times. It, it worked with, it worked with Harding. He didn't throw that up, but it worked with, uh, with, uh, Harding and Coolidge. And he said it worked with John F. Kennedy and like a buffoon. He comes right in. Oh, now you're John F. Kennedy. <laughs> and you're like, what the <laughs> hell was that said about? At all. No, he said, I said it worked with him. I didn't say I was him. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was That's, such a desperate wow. reach for it a big really moment. Was. Yeah. It was. It was the uh, reach for I knew Jack Kennedy. And you're no Jack Kennedy. That's what yeah, he that's was what trying, trying to for. do. Yeah. He was trying to he was trying to make uh, Paul Ryan look young and inexperienced. And Paul Ryan is young and is unexperienced in that kind of debate. But he held his own against a guy who was, I mean, you know, to walk out even 
when you've been sitting next to Jack the Ripper the whole time mm-hmm. is pretty amazing. Yeah. And you, walk, you walk away. He had no wounds on him, and the guy had a knife the whole time. Uh, the CNN poll showed uh, Ryan won. Yeah. 48-44. Yeah. CBA think, showed something different. But. I think if you, would, depending on who you liked going in, I think you generally said that guy won. Yeah. If you were a big, if you're a big Democrat, you said, hey, Biden finally went in. And they finally hit that guy in the face. And if you, if you, um, if you liked Romney, I think you walked away saying, um, uh, you know, let's stick to the facts here. But I, I think we have to look at two things. One, they're exposing themselves for who they are. And now you've seen a pattern, two debates in a row. You've seen a pattern of nice, polite, decent people. Not trying to tear anybody down. Not trying to tear anybody apart. Ryan, a couple of times, I thought, had a moment where he had to make a decision. There was a couple of places, and I think maybe the Kennedy part was one of them. There was another one where he had to make a decision because he leaned in like he was going to say something and respond to a really nasty remark by Biden, and he didn't. At one point, it was interesting because Biden was babbling about, you you voted to put two wars on a credit card, and it was the second time in the night that he had brought it up. And Ryan started to say, you, did you voted for, and then he stopped. So I don't know if he stopped himself, but he was interrupted so many times. He may have been interrupted by Martha and Joe at that point, yeah. but he never went back to it. And so he must have thought better of it and decided not to even go down that road. But Biden voted for it as well. Yeah. Uh, and that was, you know, I, I thought Ryan missed some opportunities last night. I think I think he I definitely think he missed some opportunities, especially but, with but Afghanistan. Again, my point is. I think you're seeing and, you know, what do I know? I talked to um, uh, David Barton yesterday. Tonight's television show we recorded last night. And tonight's television show is remarkable because tonight's television show, we're going to take you back in history to the Civil War and to uh, Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln did something right before Gettysburg that changed the war, changed the outcome of the nation. And um, it's important that you know the anniversary is next week of that action and it was divine providence when you see david lay this thing out on the chalkboards and show where the where the union was going lincoln does one thing and everything changes and it changes overnight when he lays it out on the chalkboard you'll see and I, i'm i really believe what we're seeing here is divine providence. And I think we're seeing people being obedient. Now, whether, whether whether it works or not, I don't know. But I think, again, if you listen not just to the words, you know, we will get into the, you know, the incredible lies that Biden told yesterday about um, Libya and now how they're blaming Libya on Romney. It's crazy. But, I think what you're seeing here is a revealing of who people really are. One, I can sit down at a table with people who have called me all kinds of names, and I can be in control, I can be decent, I can be honorable, and try to have a conversation. And I can do it with somebody who's a moderator who won't even enforce the rules and let a man speak. The only opportunity I think that Ryan missed that would have been a knockout punch would be this. At some point when it was really heated and he was being interrupted and rudely sneered at, if he would have said, excuse me, Mr. Vice President, I have respect for you. You have been in Washington, D.C. since 1970. You have seen it all come and go. I'm trying to have a conversation here so we can get information to the American people and let them decide. You're sneering. You're laughing. I don't know what is is happening with you. But please, Mr. Vice President, show the American people some respect and behave like a vice president. If he would have said it softly, kindly, gently, and asked him, please, 
I think it would have been a knockout punch. Yeah, at some point it felt like he needed to address how often he was being yeah. interrupted. Right. It was really and he mean, never did. I mean, no, even never I, did. honestly, I, you almost don't want to point out the sneering because you want him to continue I mean, doing if, it. Here, let me give you let me give you the ending of what should it, what, he should have said this at the very end. If he wouldn't have done it at some point softly like that, he should have said this. I'm going to forgo what I what I prepared to say tonight. Instead, I just I just would like to remind Americans what they've just witnessed throughout the debate. As this administration has done throughout the past four years, Joe Biden has been disrespectful, sneering, arrogant, combative and angry to a guy he disagrees with. He has uh, uh, derisively uh, referred to me as my friend the whole time. My friend. He didn't say that. Uh, out of anything heartfelt he has laughed he's mocked me he's interrupted me every time i try to speak and that's been the problem with the last four years they have demonized half of the american people while mocking and deriding them saying oh they're tea bags not really even listening to them while uh, marginalizing them and calling them literally here's a quote from the president their enemies while not even being willing to identify America's real enemies, Islamic extremism. They won't even identify that. What you've seen tonight is a microcosm of divisive governing, and it is tearing us apart. We cannot stand as a nation if we continue to, to divide ourselves. I have said, we're going to work together. We're going to try. We're going to try. All these men have done is separate us by race, by gender, and now finally just by income. Meanwhile, Mitt Romney as governor of Massachusetts proved he can work with those on the other side of the aisle. The legislature in Massachusetts was 87% Democrat there. Yet how many things did he get passed? How many things? Including Romney care. And he did it without doing it in the middle of the night making secret backdoor deals. The choice is clear, America. Do you want four more years of, of, of an attitude like what you've just seen? So demeaning, not to me, but to the office of the vice president. Or do you want to get back on the road? You want to start being who we really are. Start working together and rebuild, not transform, rebuild our nation. Thank you and good night. If he would have said yeah, that, oh, man. Great. it would have been a knockout. Just a knockout.